Hello, and welcome to My Adventure Reborn, a series of videos exploring the vast lore of Maple Story through the journey of our rising hero, Rog Slayer. This series tracks my warrior's progression as I attempt to become a mighty paladin and one by one defeat the many quests and bosses from Henzies to Tenebris and beyond. I'm reinventing the way I play by intentionally slowing the leveling process to complete the quests in each region and discover more about the story behind the game I've always loved. I hope you learn something along the way and do enjoy. Now, deciding to take Grendel's suggestion seriously, I spoke to Rowan. She seemed genuinely delighted by my introduction and also understood that I wished to build relationships with the fairies of Elenia. She recommended I start by talking to Arwen, but did mention Arwen doesn't really like humans. She does, however, seem to have a sweet tooth for oranges. It seems like the humans, fairies are also susceptible to bribery. So I picked up an orange from the Alinea General store, and then headed out to approach Arwen. Now you'll see Arwen is initially hesitant, but the second she sees that orange, she's immediately won over. And is even more delighted to find out Rowan was the fairy who sent you. She actually claims this means it's not a bribe, but a gift. She then recommends I introduce myself to Wing, and by the way she speaks of him, he sounds like he hates humans even more than Arwen. She mentions he often goes exploring outside, and gives me a return to town scroll that she suspects will help me win over his favor. Sure enough, as soon as he sees it, he perks up and has an ear to listen. Besides his word of thanks, it seems like Wing's only intention is to get as much out of me as he can, and he takes this opportunity to request I retrieve some more of this Elevera fruit that we retrieved for sugar back in our earlier questing. Last time, the fruit was required to make Subtrauma's curative potion, which left me wondering why Wing would possibly need it for class. I mean, perhaps this is meant to be insight into just how powerful and advanced the fairies are. Subtrauma comes off as this highly specialized mystical medicine man. I mean, could Wing really be creating equivalent potions in his simple classes? Interesting thought, which leads Wing into asking for more help. This time, he needs us to retrieve his magical potion guide that can be found in Grindel's old library. Unfortunately, I still need this guy's approval, so I decided to help him out, although it did seem a little bit sketch. <laughs> I mean, he tells me that I'm getting in to grab this magical potion guide he forgot, but to me it seems a whole lot like I'm stealing this book from Grindel's library. Nonetheless, I decided to retrieve this magic potion guide from the top shelf, and then head back to Wing, who now had everything required for his class, except for slime armpit sweat, which I've never heard of. I guess that makes two of us who didn't know slimes had armpits. Uh, but he doesn't ask us to retrieve any, so that's fine. He does, however, suggest we speak with Mar the Fairy next, who he says enjoys taking care of pets and loves apples. So just like we have before, I run over to the general store and pick up my gift. Mar's actually already heard of me and seems genuinely impressed that we were able to make friends with Wing. I guess his irrational hatred towards humans was a lot more serious than he let off. But given that we've made allies with basically every fairy in Alinea, Grendel seems pretty pleased and next recommends we go start training with his apprentice, Fanzy. So now I'm completely confused with Fanzy because I thought Mar the fairy was his master, but it almost kind of sounds like it's Grendel. Now Grendel does address Fanzy by mentioning that the last time he saw him, he was a cat. He actually ends the conversation by saying, I wonder if he ever figured out how to fix that, which seems to be alluding to the fact that Fanzy hasn't always been cat, but perhaps a human or even a fairy. 
Fancy tells me to prepare for the hardest core training I could ever get and actually reveals he used to be a human. He says he was a Meowgician who specialized in manipulating matter. He doesn't really go into detail, but says, long story short, I'm a cat now. I'm starting to like this guy. He's got a pretty cheeky little personality. After all, if he is the apprentice of Grindel, he must have been pretty exceptional in his human form. Now Fancy asks us to begin our training where he says the objective is to become stronger and tougher. Apparently the best way to do this is to test my strength against the powerful evil eyes in the Alinea trees. Pretty interesting, this kill quest actually is six parts where you go amongst the trees killing every single variant, including the famous cursed eyes from the Kerning City Party quest. Oh man, I love these. They just remind me of King Slime every single time I see them. Uh, but also the cold eyes, which we can see here, typically found deep in Ant Tunnel, and their powerful cold eye variant, which I didn't notice a notable difference in HP or damage, but being a paladin, I probably wouldn't notice their damage anyway. And finally, we got to the Surgeon Eyes and their powerful variants, which I was actually really impressed by these. I did not recall ever seeing these in the Ant Tunnel. Only the Evil Eyes, Cursed Eyes, Cold Eyes, and I think that's it. I don't know if they added these later in Maple Story, um, but nonetheless, they look badass, so I actually took the time to grab a familiar. I return to Fancy, who tells me I have made Grendel proud and grants me some EXP as he sees me off. I grabbed a little pet food for my snail and headed to Perion, ready to take my second job advancement. Now at level 33, Dances with Balrog does seem truly impressed by the power I've gained in such a short amount of time, noting that I can't actually stay a beginner forever. With that, I took his invitation to become a muscle-bound warrior. Now, some of you guys noted from my other videos, I do love physical training, so this path seemed fitting. Now, right on the precipice of newfound strength, Dances with Balrogs explains I can choose from one of three paths. He explains that there are many ways of the warriors with great distinction, and that up until this point I fought for myself. But with newfound strength comes the responsibility to fight for others, and with that, I must choose a path. He offers the way of the spearman, page, or fighter, and when questioned, characterizes Paige as having ironclad discipline, impenetrable defense, and the power to protect others, which sounds pretty good. Better yet, they can use swords and blunt weapons. So far, I've really enjoyed using two-hand hammers. I just love how unique they are. The weapon stands out completely because you literally never see warriors with blunt weapons or axes. He also mentions that paladins get the threatened skill to intimidate and weaken enemies and the power to wield elements. I don't know about you guys, but it seems like an easy choice to me. At this point, I'm teleported to the warrior test site to collect 30 dark marbles. And oh man, I love these guys. This is so OG. I'm pretty sure collecting dark marbles has been the way explorers advance since the beginning of the game. So jumping around on my little level 33 of Warrior, I couldn't help but feel that nostalgia, which is pretty much the reason we all play the game. So I finished the task and I accept becoming a page. Wow, one step closer to becoming a mighty holy warrior. I was actually geeking out after this for like 30 minutes just reading the skill, uh, the uh, skill descriptions. I'm trying not to follow any guides for this because I just want to have fun with it. So my general strategy is I start off by putting one point in everything right away uh, just to get the feel of the skills. And then I slowly upgrade my masteries and attack defense multipliers followed by the main attacks. Given that I spend most of my time questing anyway, I really don't need the efficiency of maxing attacks first. And uh, with that, I got my Frost and Fire Hammers. Now, more for aesthetics than anything, I pick up a new level 30 weapon, enhance it, and then decide to head back to Alenia, where I remember I had business to finish. This time, actually accepting Hersha's quest, 
I find myself on the other side of Blackwing's spy allegations from the young boy in Alinea. He tells me he requires my help to retrieve these pink flowers uh, in order to help stop a great conspiracy going on in Alinea. Without many more details, he requires me to get the pink anthurium flowers and tells me I can find them in Shane's garden. Shane is less than eager to share his herbs for free, but does offer to let me in for 3400 mesos. And with that, my first jump quest commenced. <laughs> At first, it was pretty easy. Uh, I had a good attitude. I was just going up and up until I was met with a few falls. It was at this point I actually got pretty frustrated and was starting to believe that my pet and familiar were making it harder for me to focus on the platforms, and so I decided to take them off. If you guys did notice that Tao Tao familiar, I got it from an event on a different character and thought it might still have life force, so I transferred it over but it ended up dying the second I tried to use it anyway. So I finally reached the top to find two monkeys actually throwing bananas in my path. But not to worry, as soon as I met the top, I was met with another stage. This time, quite different. It included these platforms with coil-loaded spear traps and some pesky thorns that knocked me off at every opportunity. Despite what it may seem, I actually really do enjoy these jump quests. It's just such an old and original part of the game, and was the great equalizer among all the classes that were not equal in movement abilities. I do believe it was only warriors and archers that were the odd man out as far as speed. At least magicians did have their teleport, and haste was available for thieves including Flash Jump for the Night Lords. Nonetheless, it's pretty funny uh, when you get knocked off these vines, and it only takes a couple minutes of patience and observing patterns to get by almost every obstacle encountered amongst these jump quests. Luckily for me, this first part only took around 17 minutes, and with that I'd reached the top, retrieving my pink Arthurium flowers as a reward. Now I guess apparently at the time, I must have thought it took longer than that because, as you can see, I was quite frustrated, uh, but happy to be done. Having thought the worst was behind me, I spoke to Hersha, who says, take this scroll, my brother made this a while back. But seeing as it's reboot, I only got fame and trade as reward. Nonetheless, I was glad to be done. Now, it only took me a short second to realize that my time in the Force of Endurance was not over. Hersha has this nervous breakdown because he thinks he's actually dying and requires that we go get a double ginseng root from, guess where, Shane's garden. So I put on my good face and headed back to Shane who would require yet another deposit, this time 6,800 mesos. And that's where we're going to leave it. Until next episode. And that concludes episode 3. If you learned anything new or interested in this video, please give this video the thumbs up. And if you enjoyed, subscribe and consider recommending it to a mapler you know so they can enjoy it too. Quite an interesting bunch the fairies of Elenia are. Let me know if you think they or our allies in Perion will be of more importance in the future. And until next time, happy mapling.